Back on Trojans Live, Jordan Moore, John Jackson, and the USC Athletic Director, Pat Hayden, joining us now. Pat, we haven't had a chance to talk to you yet this year. Uh, Webb, I see you every day. Well, I know. I talk to you all the time. Uh, yeah, we, JJ just gave his sort of midseason report. Uh, you know, you have a new head coach here. What's your midseason report card for football? 4-2. Uh, <laughs> um, you are, what did Bar Bill Parcells say? You are what your you record says you are? what your record is. Yeah, you know, there's some, you know, JJ just gave a great rundown of the team. I think there's some some really uh, good things that have been happening. We've got a long way to go. Uh, I know people are tired tired of hearing about it, but, you know, we're playing with 25 to 30 fewer players than other teams, so you always worry about how we're going to finish games in the fourth quarter. That's what that's what concerns me when you have 30 fewer players. You know, Pat, what's changed in your job in terms of when you watch games now? I mean, before, of course, you were an alumni and a fan, but now being the athletic director, you have the responsibility of, you know, obviously assessing the head coach and the whole Thing. How much does that change in your process of how you used to watch games and how you watch them now because there is some responsibility, obviously, on your shoulders? I, I close my eyes a lot on third downs, <laughs> and when that guy was kicking the field goal from oh, Arizona. You, I heard yeah. you were Where watching. Were you? Where were you? Uh, <laughs> I, was, I had my back turned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. And then uh, one of the guys in the booth said, he missed it. I said, you're kidding. <laughs> but, no, I, so you, I, I'm a lot more invested, you know, obviously. Yeah. I, I used to obviously watch and come to games and, and have fun with my old college buddies and such. But it's, you know, it, it's different. You know the kids more personally. You know how much time and effort they put into it, you know, much different than when you and I played here. And uh, so you, you just you want the very best for these kids. One of the things that, that's changed, too, and, and as part of this, job in this crazy world we're living in now is there's so much noise around a program i mean i'm just I, i'm a little baffled by it it's sort of the only reason i bring it up it's you know you're like these guys are six games into their tenure and it, it every yeah. game is being analyzed as if you have are holding up a guillotine and you're gonna go well third down didn't go well fire that guy <laughs> i mean yeah. it, how do you block that out you must get a million emails you're on you're on twitter i know that so i mean yeah. you know, how, how do you handle that part of your job well it's um you never get away from it number one it's kind of interesting because you can tell the age of the people who send you complaints. Because if I if I get letters like this high, there's the people from 65 to 75. <laughs> then you get emails from people who are you know 55 to 65. You get tweets from people under 40. Yeah. So it kind of depends on the age group what kind of complaints you get. But it you know it does feel um, you, you get a lot of it. But you know honestly, I mean I I played uh, with the Rams and I got booed a lot and I got criticized a lot. It was good training. <laughs> You know, and with, the, and with this team, the one person that gets criticized probably the most, and I don't know if it's fair or not, is Justin Wilcox, you know, for, you know, for defensive coordinator. Now, you and I sort of know the game, and, you know, there's circumstances, and the kids are the ones that at the end of the day have to make some plays at the end of the game. You know, how much of that is fair to him? Well, I mean, I, listen, he uh, had a reputation before he got here being one of the, great, the best defensive coaches uh, in the country. I think he still has that reputation. I understand people get frustrated that, you know, we sh the, the, the play at the end of the Arizona State game shouldn't happen. I think everybody recognized that, including Justin. Right. Uh, the idea is to get better every week. It's a long way to go. Yeah. I mean, everybody's already, you know, picked the Final Four, and they're going <laughs> to pick the Final Four again next week. It's going to be a different Final Four the week after that. Let's play them out. Let's enjoy the season. Let's play the games out. You get to pick the Final Four. You actually do get to pick the Final Four when it, when it comes down to it. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard you lay out your schedule. I, I, I know how many games you're having to watch. It, it makes your life more difficult. Why did you choose to participate in it? Why was it important for you to be a part of this process? Well, I, I was asked by the conference and, and the commissioner to, to, uh, to represent our conference because each conference has a, a kind of representative, and all, I'm on it for a two-year term. But it, it's a much larger time commitment than I imagined. <laughs> um, I, I'm spending at least two hours yeah. a day, Monday through Friday. You know, I watched probably four games on Saturday before our game, and then when I got home on on Sunday, I watched another two games. I'll watch again a game tonight. I watch a game every morning on a treadmill uh, at home, read a lot. So there's a lot. Of, and, and all the other 12 members are doing the same thing. And, you know, I have a bunch of metrics that I follow. Every, each one can follow their own guidance. And I, you know, every Sunday I meet from 1 to 3 with some folks, and I rate my teams 1 through 25. Uh, we don't publish our own a real rating for a few more weeks, but, uh, you know, I'm just kind of getting in the habit of doing it now. You know, one other thing is uh, parity in the Pac-12. <laughs> That's one thing, for the good or the bad. I mean, yeah. you know, we, us being USC, we don't want parity. We just want to be elite. <laughs> but there is parity in the Pac-12. What, wh why and how did it come just all of a sudden, or is it just coincidence that it's happening here in 2014? Because every single week yeah. we've seen 
teams can get beat. Well, you know, Colorado's better. Cal's yeah. better than they were. You go Washington State's incredibly dangerous. Hey, you ever think you were going to hear a quarterback throw for 700 and some odd That's yards? That's what I'm talking yeah. about, yeah. And, and so, lost the game. Yeah, lost the game. <laughs> I think, J.J., most people would say the new television contracts allow you to, to pay coaches so you get a better top-to-bottom coaching. That's probably true. There's some very good coaches, very innovative coaches uh, in the conference. So uh, I would say if I had to give you one answer, that's probably it. I, I will note it's it's different than when we last won a national championship. I think we played eight conference games then, but now we play nine conference games and a conference championship game, and now there's a semifinal. So there's three more games or three more roadblocks, if you will, to win a national championship than the were just a few years ago. Right. Well, it's interesting you bring that up. I wanted to talk to you about some bigger <laughs> picture stuff. When, when we look at the, now the Power Five conferences get to sort of create their own rules a little bit. They get to sort of come to the table and 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 create some sort of playing field that, that maybe works for them. What will be the biggest effect of that? And, and one of the things I wanted to sort of put on the table potentially is finding some sort of uniform scheduling in college football so that, hey, you as a selection committee person doesn't have to go, well, these guys play eight conference games, these guys play nine, and I have to somehow make sense. Somebody's going to get mad at me, but I have to make sense yeah. of what equates. Yeah, and some don't play a conference championship game. Right. Yeah. Uh, Big 12 doesn't. So, you know, th there's uh, all that to be vetted. I don't think that is part of this autonomy. Uh, that those discussions will be coming. Th those are conference by conference decisions, and I think the conferences have already met, made those. The right. SEC has said they're going to stick with their eight games, and, uh, you know, the, the Big 12 does, is only has 10 teams, so they're just going to play a round robin. Uh, which is pretty good, actually, when you play the round robin. And the other conferences are going to, with, with 12, will play a, or 12 or more, will play a conference championship game. So I, I don't think the, the Power Five is going to address that issue. So what will be the biggest issue, you think, or some of the biggest issues? Well, what's, on, I mean, what's on your hit list? Because, you, you know, one of the things you talked about when you came in was food. And it seems yeah. like you've really gotten that done uh, along with some other people. But it right. seems like you have addressed, you know, some of that, making sure the players are yeah, fed kind it, of thing. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. And, I mean, I, I think it was, it was a travesty when we had, as you guys know, yeah. at the end of the month, some of our guys didn't have enough stipend check left to, 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 to feed themselves because we don't feed kids year-round is that people right. think we do right. so now we've, we're spending over a million dollars more on these fueling opportunities for kids that's a good thing we're already doing that I think a guaranteed four-year scholarships I think we've done that in our headcount sports I think uh, we're the second school in the country to do that but I think most universities will move to that I believe the Big Ten announced that today um, we think, you know, better, you know, health care if you're injured at, at a university, um, you know, longer health care for kids will be a, an issue that uh, gains some traction and probably should. Um, you know, coming back and in, in, in graduating, I mean, we have about 25 kids per year post-eligibility. No more eligibility left. They come back 25 a year, and we kind of uh, we pay for their tuition and uh, enable them to graduate. Well, we got a million more things we'd love to talk to you about. But what are you doing next week? <laughs> <laughs> we got that voice in our head telling us we can't do it right now. But we will definitely get Pat on again uh, as we continue here on Trojans Live. Uh, fans, Ralph's makes it easy to enjoy USC pregame without even firing up the grill. Just shop at Ralph's, spend $25 on participating products, and you are in. Get low prices and fast check out at Ralph's, the official grocer of football. Football's what's coming up Saturday. Pat will be here. It's homecoming weekend, 3 o'clock kickoff at the Coliseum. You're listening to Trojans Live.